Alright, I would suggest for you guys to go read Class Over 9 first before watching this video since there will be minor spoilers here and I wouldn't want to spoil the fun because it's definitely worth your time and money. Plus, it's not even long anyway, around 3 hours for me. If you have read it, then keep on watching, I guess. Hi. For those that doesn't get the thumbnail, this is not an actual gun. It's a BB gun. It shoots BB pellets, okay? So... I'm not American enough to own an actual gun, so yeah. <laughs> like, you're different. I'm not having sex with you. Uh oh. Hey, hey, come on, stay with me. Stay with me. We're losing him! We're losing him! He's dying! Uh, no, no. <laughs> Imagine high school life in America. Yeah, that's pretty much the synopsis. Okay, I won't be able to verify the relevancy of this visual novel since I'm obviously not American and I did not study in the US for my high school days. But according to two of the other VN YouTubers who are American, seems legit enough. Best f***ing girl and the blonde. The protagonist, Nicole, is a very unique character, I would say. And that's a bit of an understatement. You can pretty much guess her character by how she introduces herself. So hey, you're like, pretty cool. What's your name? Well, my last name's Yu. Most people just call me that. Yu? What is it, like Asian? That's hot. Yeah, grandma had yellow fever. Cool, yeah. So what's your first name? Fuck. <laughs> to give it to you straight, she's a sociopath. An MC that is rude, Blunt, antisocial, cynical, and pessimistic. I can fix her. Nicole is like the prime example of someone who lost faith in humanity. Well, the men at least. And there are quite a number of reasons that explains her attitude. She is someone who has been through a lot. And one of the ways you can cope with that is just to not give a damn. And her lines. Oh my god. It's just peak writing. And a girl like you skipping the first day? Are you a bad bitch or what? I'm an abysmal bitch. You're not a big talker, are you? I don't know you. Are you just chummy with everyone you meet? Not everyone. But if they look the type to like anime, they may as well, right? I'm sorry, I look like I like anime? How do I fix that? Why are you talking to me about video games? Just something, you know, uh... What, you don't like play video games or something? I'm a thin girl. Do I fucking look like I play video games? I'd rather play dead at a necrophilia convention. All I deserve is a deep plunge. You did this, Nicole! Oh, God. Oh, shit. What was that 90s TV show? Did I do that? I'm traumatized right now. That was actually pretty good. The fact that she was not amused or interested in the slightest is killing me. Nicole is such a mood. I also want to add that there are certain moments where she can be quite manipulative of the male students. Basically taking advantage of a fact that she learned where men are very simple beings that we would do anything to get laid or at the very least see women with less clothes on. One example was that guy who fell for her and fell down for her. Literally. In that clip I showed you. All I deserve is a deep plunge. You did this, Nicole! Oh, God. Oh, shit. Nicole, uh, is there anything you learned today? that men will do literally anything for sex. But honestly, I learned that years ago. It's amazing how men will do anything just to see us with less clothes on. Yeah, it's like there's laws for it or something. I wouldn't say she's wrong. We are simple. We have simple needs. We'll buy it. We'll kill you about it. We'll beg you for it. We'll lie about it. And at the end of the day, we'll lay down our life for it. <laughs> Nicole's view towards people is not completely hopeless, however, because she wouldn't have befriended Jessica otherwise. Speaking of which, the blonde, who is also known as Jekka, her nickname. Fuck, you're right. What's your name? Jekka. What's yours? Nicole. Why'd your parents name you Jekka? Well, no, they called me Jessica, but I started doing Jekka for short. Also, Jessica's a name that just screams married at 20. She's kind of the toned down version of Nicole and thus they click together. Jekka's character complement Nicole's, so they're like a duo that 
just interact so well with each other and they bring wonders to the story. Most of the comedic parts that I cherish are the conversations between the two. Oh, that's um, fuck, what was his name? Kyler, yeah. Yeah, he's a bit of a benzosexual. What the fuck's a benzosexual? So, I'm pretty sure the photography teacher's a white nationalist. I said the tuna's good today, and you just replied with that. She also sticks by the protagonist's side and openly defends her should the situation arises. Okay, fine. Wonderful. As I was saying- You can't uh, talk like that to her! I can talk any way I like, Jessica. That's not my name. See? You don't respect any of the girls. A guy could just whip his dick out in here and you just politely say that's enough. On the other hand though, it's kind of scary to read some parts of their dialogue together. Well, if you're suicidal, just go home and kill yourself. Then he's the asshole. If he's so cynical, he'll probably just murder you. Dying would be awesome right now, but I feel like there'd be strings attached with him. You're dead. What could he possibly do? Your body doesn't disappear when you die, so whatever his twisted little anime brain wants... Ew, okay. But if he actually killed you, could I take your body to a taxidermist? Yes. Good to know. Have fun with your little dates. Ugh. The way they just nonchalantly talk about death and murder, it's disturbing somewhat. Her own lines are also not bad. Isn't that, like, abusive? She's the only mom I've ever had. How the fuck should I know? Oh, so in your spiritual worldview, God only keeps tabs on fully matured women? Yeah, Miss Lynn. Back the divine ass up. Anyway, side characters. The Predator, the Nationalist, the Awkward One, the Idiotic One, the McD Girl, the Tilf, the MILF, and the character who's supposed to be us, I guess. Well, it might be relevant for me. The glasses, into anime, socially awkward, but only for those that I'm not close with. With those that are close, I can be quite an annoying fool. Anyway, I digress. There are other side characters here though, with sprites of their own and fully voiced, so go play the damn game to find out more. Main menu page with calming music. Now one of the first things that caught my eye is this. Basically the better version of quit or exit. Fucking based deaths. Just missing this part though. Continue button leads you to 9 pages of save slots with 4 in each. 1 page of quick saves and 1 for the auto saves. Options button will of course give you- Whoa, what the hell? I called Inugami Doggy Dojo's settings page the most basic of basics. Looks like it was dethroned by this vision novel. Seriously, there's barely anything here. And I can't even be happy that there's no volume setting for the voiceovers because that's what the scene setting does. Plus, it even controls the background noises such as chattering or situational sound effects. Hence the name, scene volume. Speaking of scenes, you'll experience the story in the usual ADV format, but there will be some NVL moments like in the opening and endings. The mobile on the bottom right here will, as it says, pause the game and bring up the menu. And this bottle of pills lets you go back to previous lines. The about button is just details on the game, the voice actors and the developers. Oh yeah, if you want to get back to the main menu during your reading session, you get this pop-up, which is attention grabbing to say the least. And if you try to close the game also during your gameplay, you get insulted as a bonus. So the devs are technically saying, if you go outside, you lack style and you're a bitch. What am I supposed to do? Good thing I'm an introvert that likes to stay indoors. The last thing in the main menu is the same mobile as you saw during the gameplay. But this time it shows text messages after you've completed an ending. So I won't show them. As I've mentioned in the beginning of the video, it's around 3 hours for me, or 3.1 to be specific. And around 3 hours and 20 on average in VNDB at the time of recording. So yeah, it's one of the shorter VNs. But it should have been longer, objectively and subjectively speaking. I'll share why in the story discussion and personal opinion section. For a short VN, you get 15 endings, which is a lot. and 
also a f ton of choices. Speaking of which, the choice prompts will be like this as an example. I would give a recommendation here if you haven't read it already, that is to go in blind for your first playthrough. It may shock you as mine did me. Then be my guest, follow a guide online if you wish. This visual novel is an attempt at satire and it does its job very well. Even if it's set in a high school environment, it is quite deep. It has dark humor, tackling on topics such as discrimination, nationalism, depression, even PDF files, pretty much the ugly side of mankind. All of which gave me quite the culture shock. Okay, the events in the story may or may not have happened. I can't say since I wasn't in high school yet in the year 2000s. I entered during 2012 and that was in another country far, far away. Where I grew up, I've never seen these kind of moments except for the bullying and the fist fighting. But those are pretty mild when compared to the scenarios in this visual novel. Even if they're exaggerated, a story is typically based on real life experiences, so there's gotta be some ground for the writing to exaggerate on. Comedy is the writing approach here, but most of the time, they didn't feel funny, they just felt sad. Sure, there were some moments where I had a few grins, but most of the comedy here are used to mask the eerie scenarios, hence dark humor. That being said, this is from my perspective, and I'm just mainly culture shocked after reading this VN. You might find it funnier if you're an American, since it'll highly likely be more relevant to you. As for the execution itself, the pacing is not really good sometimes. You'd have these time jumps in certain moments where you would feel like it's a sequence of events rather than a progressing timeline. Other than that, the character interactions are amazing. Whenever Nicole speaks, it's like music to my ears. Anyway, so mom was crying, packing up the moving boxes. And that's when she told me, we're moving out of state. And I just got settled. I said, fuck you, I'm living with dad. He's just a neighborhood down. I put the boxes down, go over, knock on the door, and boom, a gunshot. My second Christmas killed himself. I walked in, floor looked like a whole ass video game, just blood everywhere. And get this, his suicide note was stuck to the fridge with a cookie monster magnet. All he wrote on it? Nicole's fault. I'm Nicole, by the way. Hi, what the fuck did I do to him? Pair that out with Jekka's interactions and you have a pretty solid duo. You're on thin ice right now. You're on your fourth wife right now because you couldn't make it as a photographer. <laughs> I heard it was only three. He may or may not have pictures of you in neo-Nazi shirts because I may or may not have been there. Actually, I may or may not have been covered in baby oil. <sighs> Well, I guess racism wins. Can we see the pictures? <laughs> on the other hand, the character development is a hit or miss. It really depends on the endings. Nico sometimes grows as a character, but it's determined by which direction the development heads into. Meaning, yes, it can go backwards. The thing is, however, it's not her fault. Sure, she's free, oh, but the world around her is just as bad, if not worse. There are some things that I don't condone her doing, such as the manipulating part, but most of the time she's a victim to all the shit that's affected her. It's basically like the themes in the Joker movie. Everybody just yells and screams at each other. Nobody's civil anymore. Nobody thinks what it's like to be the other guy. You think men like Thomas Wayne ever think what it's like to be someone like me? To be somebody but themselves, they don't. They think that we'll just sit there and take it like good little boys. That we won't werewolf and go wild! Oh yeah, the endings. Some of them will be like, eh, nothing special. Others are like, that's fine. Oh. And there are those that will just make you go, oh, damn, that's... That's dark. Those ending didn't pull any punches, which does their job even better. You know who else did their job better? For the good parts, I will point out one thing that everyone will appreciate. The voice acting. Writing shapes the character, but in visual novels or anime, the voice actors are the ones that bring them to life. And the voiceovers in this VN 
are among the best I've ever heard. Especially Nicole's, whose VA is Elsie Lovelock. She and the rest should get more recognition here. I didn't find any particularly bad voice acting in this game. So, the VAs here should be given more credit. Even if you dislike or hate this vision novel, you will enjoy the voice acting. Elsie Lovelock, Kaylee Mills, and all the rest that were part of this project, give yourselves a pat on the back. Thank you for making this game so much better. It may be just a job for you guys, but I think it's a lot more to that. This is why I wanted the game to be longer. The writing is already good. The voice acting made it great. Give me more of this shit. Moving on, it was also nice to learn about new things in this VN. Most of them gave me culture shock, but I guess I did learn about the names of drugs such as Adderall, Xanax, and Percocet. At first I was like, the f*** are those? And then I realized they were drugs. I'll be honest, I've never heard of these drugs in my entire life, so I had to google them. Hell, the only drugs I pretty much know about are paracetamol and ibuprofen. It may not be as useful knowledge as I would like, but still knowledge regardless, so thanks I guess? <laughs> as for the bad stuff, it's just one thing, that is the forced autoplay. I didn't mention this in the technical stuff part, but during your reading session, the game will just proceed whether you like it or not. You can still click to progress the lines faster if you read quick, but if you just want to stop at a particular line, you can't. And so, you have to rewind using that pill bottle more often than you would like. This is just a personal nitpick from me, I don't think it'll actually affect the casual reader's experience. Now, let's talk about a spoiler moment, so skip forward to the conclusion if you haven't read it yet. My first playthrough had me be as nice as possible to everyone I encountered, and the result was a noose around Nicole's neck. For USB N3. See, see what I mean about shocking endings? I wasn't prepared to receive that particular one. My first walkthrough, I was excited and hooked, and Nicole just dies. Holy f- It's as if being nice is a sin in this game. It was a great wake-up call though. This game doesn't mess around. It just gives it to you straight. Then I finished off all the other endings, and now the normal ones are like, eh, when compared to the darker ones. Except for that YouTube ending, because I would like to relate to it more. Please subscribe. One other thing I'm troubled by is the PDF files in the story. That gym teacher and the counselor. Possibly even that Mr. White guy, but he's more of a nationalist. I'm not surprised by the fact that they're there. They will exist, unfortunately. But more on the fact that they're not punished or convicted for it for a long while. It feels like the students just accepted their fate or something. Or maybe they did try to retaliate, but are powerless. It's just saddening to see predators in positions of authority and abusing their influence. Like that one line from the counselor? So I should have had a baby at 13 then? No, just intercourse at 13. The baby coming by the time you're 14. I'm leaving. Theoretically, of course. Hmm. If she tells her parents, I'll just say she was acting out. At least the principal attempts to do something about it, but even she has her own problems. When you fooled around with half your staff, they don't take you very seriously. I know I might seem old to you, but we're actually not too different. Which leads to... First, I'd like to thank our female authority figure, Miss Lynn, along with her cleavage for symbolizing how the men at this school have treated me here. Like a sex object. <gasps> and gets called this. So again... While I find the notes flattering, the boys need to quit writing bad bitch on my office door. I'll start tracking who left them if it continues. Hey, I would say it's a compliment. Bad bitch sounds hot AF. <laughs> on a side note, my favorite parts of the game are Nicole's reactions to just things. Ah! The gym teacher's trying to fuck! Honey, quiet down there. I need this job. You won't get his hand! Oh my god, what are you doing in the girl's locker room? Were you really grabbing some minor ass? Minor as in underage? I think my ass is pretty major to be honest. Can we fast forward this to the part where you tell me I'm not alone so I can leave? Well, I wouldn't give any old lecture to you, Nicole. One of our brightest students deserves better. I have a C plus average. To be honest, I've had trouble looking away the entire time you've been here. You're a beautiful young woman. 
Are you kidding me right now? Where's the hidden camera? What show is this? Not to mention beautiful. I just love to see you whimsically stroll up and down the hallways between classes. Is this happening right now? Nicole, there's no prank here. Oh, so you're just seriously a pedophile. Awesome. Nicole, how would you feel about participating in some extracurricular learning exercises? Will I learn how to exercise my right to say no? The most memorable for me is this one. I wanted to show you what you do to me. Show me what? I don't see... Oh my god, all three Ooh. inches of it? What the fuck? Why? <laughs> three inches? <laughs> <laughs> that that's gotta hurt. She shattered every man's pride with just that line alone. Great writing. <laughs> to conclude, I think Class of 09 is a fantastic vision novel, which is funny to think about since it's advertised as an anti-vision novel. Yeah, that's what you call ironic. It's comedic and entertaining yet very dark and saddening. For a game that's around 3 hours worth of playtime and priced just under 10 euros, I would say it's a great pickup. Not because of the length, but due to the content itself. I want to say one last thing. Don't be Jeffrey. I'm a degenerate myself and I think my tastes are more down the rabbit hole than him. But Try to limit your expressiveness. In fact, don't be like anyone in this f***ing game. Not even Nicole. You can't fix her. She doesn't need fixing. She can ruin me all she wants. Anyway, the DGEN score for Class of 09 is a 9. That's all for me. Hope you guys can like and subscribe if you enjoyed the vid. And if you want to support me further, please consider joining my Patreon linked down below. Later, DGENs.